Hey, Patrick here. So the other day, during my research on how nutrition affects the brain, I came across this TED talk. In Chicago, researchers started something called the Chicago Health and Aging Project. And what they did was they looked at what people in Chicago were eating. They did very careful dietary records in hundreds and hundreds of people. And then they started to see who, as the years go by, stayed mentally clear and who developed dementia. And in Chicago, some people ate relatively little saturated fat, around 13 grams a day, and others ate about twice that much. And the researchers just looked at who developed Alzheimer's disease. And can I show you the figures? Here's the low group, and there is the high group. In other words, if you were avoiding the bad fat, your risk was pretty low. But if you were tucking into the cheese and the bacon strips, your risk was two, three, or, or more fold higher. Scary, right? Now, he's right about the study he mentioned, but when I researched for it, I found actually something really interesting. There's a second study that also looked at the association between saturated fat and Alzheimer's, and they found exactly the opposite. The second study looked at the population in the Netherlands, and they found that with every increase of 7.2 grams of saturated fat, the risk for dementia was reduced by 9%, and the risk for Alzheimer's by 17%. So the people who consume more saturated fat had less Alzheimer's. To be fair, these numbers are really small, but still they completely contradict the study which was mentioned by Dr. Neil Bernard in his TED talk. Where does the discordance come from? I have my own ideas, but let's first look at how both studies were designed. Both were observational studies that used food questionnaires to track dietary records. Observational studies are generally considered as low-level scientific evidence, but let's not go down this rabbit hole right now. So in the Chicago study, where they found that saturated fat increases the risk for Alzheimer's, they looked at 815 people, and they found that after 3.9 years, in total 16% of the population developed Alzheimer's. On the other hand, the study from the Netherlands looked at 5,935 people and found that after 6 years, only 3% developed dementia. So there's the first problem. The Chicago group is rather small and an unusual high number of people developed dementia. Ok, to be fair, the Netherlands population was on average slightly younger. However, there's still a striking difference. The second big difference I found was that the Chicago study barely accounted for any co-founding factors. Co-founding factors are usually taken into account when comparing different factors in populations. Let's say we want to know whether eating meat causes cancer, and we look at two different groups, meat eater and non-meat eater. But the meat eaters also smoke much more, and if we don't account for this factor, we don't know if the cancer is caused by smoking or by eating more meat. So the Chicago study only adjusted for sex, race, education and APOE4 status, which is a gene that predisposes to Alzheimer's. No adjustments for smoking, drinking or body weight, all risk factors for cognitive decline. Not accounting for those factors can make a big difference. Let's say somebody gets a lot of saturated fat from fast food, but at the same time he also gets a lot of sugar, processed carbs, and we also know that fast food eaters generally drink and smoke more. This lets me think that maybe the people in Chicago just got much more saturated fat from like hot dogs, pizza or burgers. And the people in the Netherlands got their fat from like whole fat fermented cheese or grass fed beef. Did you ever drive through the Netherlands? You see cows literally everywhere standing on the grass. You don't see this at all in the States. Now I'm not going to dwell much longer on those studies, as I think it became pretty clear that the study Dr. Neil Bernard chose to present has its flaws. Instead, let's talk for a few minutes about the idea that fat can actually be good for the brain. So did you ever hear of somebody who reverses Alzheimer's? Me neither, until recently. In 2014, Dr. Dale Bradison published for the first time a dietary program that showed to reverse Alzheimer's. On his program, 9 out of 10 patients reversed their cognitive decline. And he said something on top when he published in 2016 again that 10 out of 10 people reversed their Alzheimer's. Reading it made me really curious what the program is about. 
So I got his book and had a look into it. Short disclaimer, Alzheimer's is a very complex disease that can be caused by many factors. But at the very base of Dr. Bredesen's program is a so-called KetoFlex diet, with the goal to have ketones in the range of 0.5 to 4 millimoles per liter, and he even recommends using medium chain triglycerides as one way to get there. As a short reminder, ketones only go up when somebody is fasting or when eating a very high fat, low carbohydrate diet. Additionally, medium chain triglycerides are technically saturated fat. So the fat that according to Dr. Neil Bernard leads to Alzheimer's. With saturated fat. Bad fat. We've known for a long time that that raises cholesterol and there's a lot of it in bacon grease. An example on how powerful medium chain triglycerides can be in reversing cognitive decline comes from Steve Newport. At the age of 57, his Alzheimer's became so bad that he didn't even remember how to do a clock. However, only 14 days after his wife started giving him daily coconut oil, which is by the way very high in medium chain triglycerides, he improved drastically and remembered partially how to do a clock. To be fair, the medium chain triglycerides from coconut oil is not the bad animal saturated fat and is probably even a saturated fat Dr. Neil Bernard would approve. However, as it is explained in the paper with the title Man the Fat Hunter, fat and especially animal fat was probably the nutrient that has our ancestors allowed to grow bigger brains, which is what eventually has made us humans, the smartest species on earth. If we look at what our hunter-gatherers ancestors ate, it becomes pretty clear that saturated fat can't be that bad for us, at least from an evolutionary standpoint. Assuming your ancestors dwelt somewhere in Europe, they probably got around one third of their food from hunted animals. And don't forget that back then they ate the whole animal, not just the lean parts we eat nowadays. Okay, I'm not gonna go into detail on what actually causes Alzheimer's. But to me, the most convincing data points towards the role of high blood glucose and high insulin levels in the development of Alzheimer's, as it is also explained in this paper with the title Alzheimer's is type 3 diabetes. Now, does this make Dr. Neil Bernard a bad doctor? No, there is no guarantee that he knew about the other study from the Netherlands, even though it was published earlier and also in a very good journal. However, the point is, it doesn't make a very good TED talk to show contradicting evidence. So he had to cherry pick his data to convey his point, which is that saturated fat is bad. After all, he has seen a lot of people improve on a vegan diet, and I think he believes that this is the healthiest diet possible. Alright, that's it. I'm not gonna discuss whether a vegan diet is healthy or not. I just wanted to, on the one hand, clarify the scientific evidence and on the other hand, make you more aware that you shouldn't believe everything. Even a TED talk with almost 4 million views can be wrong. Thank you.